Am I the a-hole for refusing to help my 21 brother 24 with his kid 5 during a medical emergency? So, my brother and I don't have a relationship. Cut him off when I was in high school after one day came home early and saw that my brother and my girlfriend were doing the deed on our couch. Since then, I've seen myself without a brother. I've held this conviction for the last few years. He has tried to get me to forgive him as we've gotten older and had apologized, but I refuse to forgive him. I avoid him at family function and if he tried to speak to me, I pretend he doesn't exist. My family has tried to get me to forgive him, but I always say it's his fault it's like this, not mine. A few nights ago at around 2 in the morning, I get a random call from an unknown number. It's him and is begging me to drive 45 minutes from my dorm to his house so I can watch his kid. His wife was having a heart attack, it was just Anjana, and he needed someone to watch him while he goes to the hospital. I asked him how he got my number, but he said that our mom had given it to him while she was away in case of emergency. I told him that I wasn't going. He begged me. He said he needed his brother's help. He said if I help him this once, he'll never talk to me again. I told him no, and that it wasn't my problem. He begged again, but I hung up and went back to bed. Come morning, my phone is full of texts from my sister and my mom telling me how awful I am. My brother had to call up our sister and left his five-year-old alone for three hours while he was at a hospital. They all told me I was awful and petty for holding a grudge this long. I feel I did nothing wrong. He betrayed me first, and these are the consequences of his actions. Am I the a-hole? Now let's read the top comments on this post. I'm going to go with not the a-hole. As it turns, in case of emergency, you can in fact wake a kid up and bring them with you to the hospital. What you really can't do is wait 45 minutes for the babysitter to show up if you think someone is having a heart attack, or leave a five-year-old alone for five hours. Actually, thanks to you-know-what, hospitals do not allow children to visit. Depends on the locale, then. Here, I've had parents bring a kid beyond a patient to the ER. Also, surprise, in the ER, when there's concern of heart attack or stroke, you don't get to go in with them past the waiting room. Worst case scenario, Opie's brother drops mom off and sits in the car with a the tyke. There are better ideas than leaving the kid home alone. Not day home. He left his five-year-old alone for three hours? Why? Why was that his only option? Have you been their secret plan in case of emergencies this whole time? Your brother and his wife sound so negligent. Agree. As a parent, that's just ridiculous. The wife could have taken an ambulance alone. You don't leave a five-year-old alone, especially for that long. Not stay home. You live 45 minutes away. You weren't the person to call regardless of the status of your relationship with your brother. Even if you'd be willing and got up and gone there immediately, what was he gonna do with a kid for those 45 minutes? And that's 45 minutes just for the actual driving. You couldn't have been there in less than an hour. Why is this not the top comment? If the brother's wife was actually having a heart attack, she didn't have 45 to 60 minutes to wait for Opie to arrive. Next story. Am I the a-hole for uninviting my cousins from my wedding for feeding info to my mom? I, 28 male, am an only child. When I was 12, my parents divorced when my dad found out my mom cheated on him. This was devastating to my dad. My parents were best friends and started dating when they were 17. I played sports and my dad was my coach, so I had a much closer relationship to him than my mom. I was supposed to spend one week at my mom's, then the next week at my dad's but I would usually just lock myself in my room at my mom's. Usually, my dad would drop me off and I would get on my bike and ride a couple miles back to his house. My mom would ask me things, and I would literally pretend like she didn't exist. It got so bad lawyers got involved thinking my dad was turning me against my mom. My dad encouraged me to spend time with my mom, but I couldn't. My mom tried putting us in therapy, but I would just sit there till the time was up not saying a word to her. Eventually, my mom broke down and let me just live with my dad. I haven't spoken a word to my mom in 15 years. She would show up to my games alone. Sometimes, I would ask my dad to tell her to leave. Sometimes, I didn't even notice she was there. She would try to talk to me after, and I would walk right past her. I cut her whole family off besides a few of my cousins that were around my age. She showed up to my high school graduation, and I asked a couple teachers to remove her, and they did. She never dated anyone else to my knowledge, and was still attempting to reconcile with my dad a few years before he passed. 
calling it the biggest mistake of her life and begging my dad to forgive her. When my dad passed a couple years ago, she tried to show up to the funeral at a metro outside to ask her to leave. My fiancé, Rachel, was with me when I did this, and my mom cried upon learning we were engaged. Rachel introduced herself as my fiancé, saying she couldn't believe I hated her still this many years later. So last week, I received a letter from a mom with a large check inside. In the letter, she said she couldn't live knowing she wouldn't be invited to her only child's wedding, that her whole family's hurt that I cut them off, and that she had been keeping tabs on me all these years through my cousin's updates out of respect for me, but couldn't handle not being at the wedding. I ripped the check up and sent it back to the return address. She shouldn't have even known my address as I keep her blocked on all social media. So I called up my cousins who admitted that since I was 14. They have been providing my mom with updates on me. Prom pictures, college updates, engagement photos, and they sent her my address. I was so mad that I told them they wouldn't be invited to the wedding anymore because I don't want my mom getting access to it. Rachel is saying I'm going too far now. And uninviting my cousins along with freezing out my mom's whole family because of her actions is an a-hole move. Am I the a-hole? Edit. The cheating was with a teammate's dad. This was highly embarrassing for me and caused me to have to move towns. Caused me to lose friends. Now for the top comments. I'm going to go out on a limb and say you're the a-hole. Acting out as a 12-year-old is to be expected. Deciding not to ever forgive your mom is totally right. Though it was 16 years ago and you, well affected, were not really the aggrieved party. The fact that you're still throwing tantrums like a 12-year-old at the age of 28 makes you the a-hole. Edit. I'd even go so far as to say your fiancé should consider this a pretty serious red flag. The fact that you can act with such hatred and spite over something that happened over 16 years ago, it only peripherally involved you, to me shows a pretty serious character flaw. At the very least, she should be concerned about what it would take for you to direct that anger at her, and what form that anger would take. For the edit, that's exactly what I thought. Being engaged to someone so unforgiving and showing so little empathy, even to their own mother, would scare the heck out of me. I would advise her to run. Uh, go to therapy and unpack this. This is a pathological level of hatred. Unless your mom literally told you to your face that she regretted ever having you with your dad and kicked your dog as part of the divorce. I don't think people have to let go of anger and forgive every single slight. But you weren't even the one cheated on. And it sounds like she tried to do everything right by you. See, I am the first person to advocate no contact if you have to. Because some parents aren't much more than DNA donors. And some are worse than that. But Opie is taking this so personally, for over 15 years and letting the anger drive their familial relationships away. That's very sad. I've been reading through the replies and struggling with it for this reason. I'm no contact for my family, but it feels like there are either tons of info missing or their attitude is unfounded. If my parents had ever reached out in a sincere way, like showing up to events or writing a letter, then I would give them a chance, after making sure that I'm not hallucinating the whole thing. First off, I'm so sorry for what you've been through. Dealing with your mom's cheating and her parents' divorce had to be hard and traumatic. I'm also sorry for your loss of your father. But I gotta ask, when is it gonna be enough? Your mom lived most of her life with the loss of her husband and her son. She lost everything. After all this time, when is it gonna be enough? Are you really going to grow old and die with that pain and anger? You're not free. You don't have to accept your mistakes, but you need to forgive. This was between your parents. I know firsthand what you're going through. Go to your mom. Tell her how you feel. You owe it to yourself. I've come to peace with never seeing or speaking to her again. I was fine till my cousins did what they did. It's not some lifetime punishment. She made her choices. She cheated on our family. She could have started another if she really cared about having a family. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my brother the truth that it was our parents' fault our relationship was so strained? So, my younger brother Matt never had the best relationship with me or my younger sister growing up. The reasons for this are because of my parents and their mistreatment of me and my sister, and their use of him as an excuse for it. I am 9 years older than Matt and my sister is 8. Matt has a form of high-functioning autism. We've known this since he was about two years old. 
Ever since my parents found this out, they have used him as an excuse to avoid any responsibilities and gain as much sympathy and handouts as possible, claiming that caring for Matt was a massive job that took their attention 24-7. A big aspect of this was that they proceeded to neglect me and my sister at every available opportunity. They never once attended anything for me or sister. They refused to be there in any aspect, emotionally or physically, for either of us. The truth about it, though, was Matt required nowhere near the amount of attention that they claimed. He had no behavior issues once he entered into elementary school and was very self-sufficient. Yet, my parents would use him as an excuse for everything, even once refusing to pick my sister up when she was abandoned by friends almost 20 miles away, claiming Matt needed them here when he was fast asleep. We also both went through massive depressive bouts and were told by our parents that they did not have time for our problems because of Matt. Towards the end of my time living with my parents, my extended family slowly began to cut my parents out once they learned the extent of their lies regarding Matt. Suffice to say, this destroyed our relationship with Matt. For a long time, me and sister despised him. Even today, our sister outright refuses to talk to him or our parents, only communicating with me. I myself am on low contact with the parents as well, but I realized long ago that Matt was blameless in the situation, and taking out my anger towards my parents on him was wrong. So around the time he entered college, I reached out and started a relationship with him. Out of nowhere though, Matt asked me recently why me and my sister were so cold to him growing up. Neither me or sister ever told him the truth, and seeing as he's an adult now, I decided he deserved the answer. I told him that our parents are narcissists and exploited his autism as an excuse to neglect me and sister. I told him about how they left sister 20 miles from home at night with no way home and used him as an excuse. He became very livid about this and apparently confronted our parents about this. My parents have lost their minds now, accusing me of trying to ruin their relationship with Matt and claiming that I am nothing more than an entitled brat. Sister as well has begun blowing me up claiming that I need to stop opening old wounds and drop contact altogether or stop involving her in this. Now for the comments. Not today, home. I have no sympathy for your parents. Continue to cut them off. If you did it just to cause a rift, then you would be the a-hole. But I think it was probably very helpful to Matt. You probably spent a lot of time wondering what he did wrong or what was wrong with him that his siblings hated him. Knowing that it was not about him or something he had done will probably go a long way about making him feel happier and more confident in general. I agree. Maybe he wasn't mistreated to the same extent as his siblings, but his parents used him as a pawn, lied to him, degraded him and ruined his relationship with his siblings. He's a victim too, and deserved to know the truth. You don't owe it to your parents to keep whom they hurt and how a secret. Your sister's right that it's long been time to go full no contact. Not today, home. He deserved to know the truth. And your parents deserve to be exposed for how they handled things. Your parents need to take responsibility for the outcome of their mistakes. Using his disability as an excuse to treat other people poorly is wrong. Not today, home. It was a good thing he told Matt the truth. Because he deserves to know his parents for the neglectful narcissist they are keep trying to build a relationship with him and keep low slash no contact with your parents. As far as your sister goes, try to have a conversation with her if she's willing to, but don't try and push her to foster a relationship with Matt. But you really should cut off your parents because it doesn't benefit you to keep them in your life at all. Last story. Am I the a-hole for not lying about thinking the way my sister met her fiancé was not funny and cute? I'm 19 female, my sister is 21. She's engaged to a guy I haven't met too many times. Because of the pandemic and both of us going to school in different countries. Just once on my sister's birthday and once on Christmas. He is 30 or 31. Every interaction I've ever had with him has been fine, but brief. On New Year's Eve, my sister's fiancé was working so she came to a party my aunt threw. At one point, one of my older relatives asked how they met and my sister told them the story which is basically that my sister was driving in front of him. And I guess she wasn't going fast enough, so he started driving really aggressively, tried to pass her on a double yellow, and ended up causing a fender bender trying to avoid getting hit by incoming traffic. When she gets out of her car, he starts screaming at her and berating her. She starts crying, 
He feels bad, asks her out on a date, and tells her he'll pay for everything. Deductible repairs. He even said he'd pay for the first year of payments if she needs a new car. He's loaded. She took him up on a date, and the rest is history. So this is where I might be the a-hole, and what I'm asking for your judgment on. After she was done, one of my cousins was like, Oh my gosh, that's such a cute story, OP. Isn't that so funny? So while I would never tell her my opinion unsolicited, I also didn't want to lie. And I didn't want my 16-year-old cousin who was also there to think anything about this was cute or funny. So I told the truth and said I thought it was a little alarming, and that I hoped this road rage was a one-time thing. One of my aunts agreed with me and I made sure to add that I'm sure it was a one-time thing, because whenever I met him, he seemed very pleasant, and my sister was clearly very happy, and the conversation moved on. Later on, my mom said that I should have just lied and said a story was cute, or just laughed and said, yeah, or something. I told her I felt uncomfortable lying, and that I did think the story was alarming, and had my sister told me that story at any other time, I would have said the same. My mom said I caused a scene and embarrassed my sister and that I'm the a-hole here. I don't think I caused a scene, but I did answer the question honestly. Am I the a-hole for not lying and saying the story was cute? Note, I'm not trying to break any rules here, so I want to make it clear I'm not looking for relationship advice of any kind. I'm specifically looking if I'm an a-hole for responding the way I did. Not the a-hole. It's not a cute story. He could have fatally harmed someone, and yelled at her like a psycho. You shouldn't have lied about it. Agreed. When will this cliché bad boy romanticization end? No, definitely not day hollow B. Do not feed that myth that reckless psychos with anger issues are sweet teddy bears deep down. It's not a cute story, it's an inability to control his anger, which may end up bad for your sister. Additionally, he is a lot older than she is. At 21, she's only starting life, and is well into his. Yikes, all the way around. Not stay home. Not stay home. If someone had caused an accident through reckless driving and then screamed at me, I would have called the police on him. But not taken him for coffee. Your sister has a weird taste in men. Edit. And of course, you need not have pretended to like the story. It was not a major issue. Didn't cause a scene, and maybe your sister will observe his behavior a little more closely in future.